Welcome Flip Clock fans. This is the Panasonic RC6551. This is known as the Digitator. This was sent into Flip Clock Fan Studios by a person who wanted me to check it out. They got it at a thrift store for two bucks. Now you can't beat that. This clock came out in 1971. It was advertised up to 1973 and it was a high-end flip clock. It ran about $54. And that's about $346 in today's dollars. And if you put that in perspective, a U.S. postage stamp, first class was $0.08. Cents. Average rent was $150. Movie ticket was $1.50. And the average car was $3,500. But this isn't your average car. This is the new 1971 Ford Pinto. That's when the Pintos first came out, if that doesn't put it in perspective. Well, this clock's probably in a little better shape than most of the Pintos you'll see. But it's got some major issues. It does have the side knobs. They're okay. The, there's two top knobs missing. The clock is dirty. Of course, we expect that. But you see here we've got a crack right there on the corner. And in looking at this clock, it looks to me like it's been dropped. You can see these two knobs here are bent inwards. But the real issue is here with the digits. You'll see it gets real bungled up. So I'm guessing this that could have happened with the drop that I'm suspecting. The alleged drop. So we've got major issues we're going to have to address. Now, you take a clock apart from the bottom and you have to take the clock mechanism screws out to get to it. That's kind of unusual. There's that piece. But you're working with the clock upside down. When You see, th that wouldn't have come off when you were taking the lid off, so that had to be from a fall. But we're working from the upside down here so you can see a little bit of what's going on. There's the tuner. It's going to need a check of the bulb there because it's not lighting up when the radio's on. Now, if you see right in the middle there, that's, that's the main rail where the electric comes in, and that is hot. And you can really get hurt or killed uh, by working on this clock when it's energized, so don't do that. This is the front piece. That lifted right out without any problem. And this I call these the bezel. I don't know if that's what it is, but that's what I call it. It's in good shape, really. You can see here where this post is bent in. Those, that's where the two knobs were. I mean, that can probably be, be straightened out. There's a screw I have to take out, one on the other side, too. There's our neon glow bulbs. Probably green. I'm pretty sure they were green in, initially. So we've got the clock energized. You can see the whirly gig turning like a champ, but the clock's not flipping. And that's a major issue, and we'll talk about that got to use a lot of caution when you're holding a clock like this. And like I said, there's no flipping action going on. That's that's a pretty significant issue, which it usually means there's a gear stripped out. And that could be very bad. May not be able to be repaired. So when trying to fix this mechanism as far as the digits go, I'm trying to get a feeling for what's what's actually happening. And it's becoming clear that uh, they've kind of jumped the track there, these digits. See how they're malaligned? You've got to remember that. And you don't want to touch that down to tools or anything like that. That really gave a me that it's on, but uh, you could get zapped. That came out pretty quick, and you can see that tab is bent, and that's supposed to be straight. That can be fixed. It's kind of forgiving. You can do that once or twice. So I'm looking at the way these match up here. It's not flipping, as you can see. The hours you know, dropped from 5 to 5. Now there's two hour tiles, and that's the thing to realize. It's just the way they made them. And one tile is supposed to flip at around 27, and um, bring you, it'll be the same hour it's supposed to be. But in this case, it doesn't. It'll flip you over to. Uh, I've taken it flips you over to the same hour. I take I took the motor off there. That allows the mechanism to actually turn backwards. So I was thinking, well, maybe I can kind of line these numbers up by going backwards. But that's a bad idea because I'd have to bend that tine there. I'd have to bend that or take the bar off and that's really getting into business there 
So that's going to be, that's not the way I'm going to go because that, that would be hard to repair it. So it seems to me that 27 should probably be 47, which would make everything kind of line out. So that's the, the deal. I, I'm going to probably, probably try to adjust the minutes. So if you look, when you turn the minutes, you can see that one wheel on top there turning. That's uh, that, but down below here, there's a brass gear that rotates every time that turns, and that turns this middle gear, and the middle gear there is impacting the hours. So if I could take that middle gear off, that would allow me to move the minutes without it impacting the hour wheel. So I'm going to take that off and then adjust the minutes and to get it to where it should line up. You can see it didn't work. And we we're dropping the next hour at 27, so we're, we're 20 minutes behind. Now, I've t I took that gear off and adjusted and put it back on. And even though I've still got to put some, replace some of those tiles, but you can see that the numbers are flipping correctly now. So that's a relief. It flips just fine. It wasn't too hard. Now when you look at, you see that flip, the, the hour flips, there's two tiles for the hour. You see those little extensions there push a spring over there. And that's what allows that hour to drop exactly at the right time when it goes zero, zero, because there is no extension there. But anyway, we've got all the flip tiles in there except this one. It's got a broken off tab and there's a couple ways to try to fix that. I'll get it fixed eventually. But let's look at the motor. I've taken off the covering of the gearbox there. And it, we've got some major, major problems here. It's going to be hard for you to see, but there's a gear right there that is supposed to be touching the brass gear that comes off the motor. Now that brass gear is turning fine, so the motor's working, but that gear is missing that brass gear by about a millimeter it's been completely stripped so you look at that and you think what am i going to do about that well there was an instructable um someone had put online about a clock they had gotten at a thrift store i guess had similar issue and the motor actually looks very much the same as ours and he talked about how he tore into that thing I thought, well let's give it a go so when you look at this motor and how you're going to accomplish that very carefully so what we've got here are three posts and you can see sort of like rivets there and there and they come through on the other side and to me it looks like these were the ones that were uh, snapped in last and I'm going to drill that out with a, a bit that just covers that maybe a little bit more just so i'm going to drill it down just so i'm not going to drill and tap this and put in little screws although that would probably be a good thing i'm going to try to preserve as much of that as we can and i think that we can snap it back that's what the guy on the instructables did and i think we can do that too now you can see i've gotten the motor loose from the gearbox after drilling that out so we're left with just the gearbox here and i was able to snap that cover off and you got to do that carefully it, it, it's it's harder than it may sound. You just got to be careful. You can see that gear. It looks different than the others. It's kind of a different color. But it is stripped almost to, down to nothing. It's like little nubs. You could probably try to count those and then try to get a replacement gear. But what I did was I had a clock motor that was similar but not the same. So the gears wouldn't have lined up with the clock. So I broke into that clock. It was kind of a practice run too. And I got the similar gear. Now you look at that, you always think, well, that's not the same gear. But it is. That's how much wear occurred for whatever reason. I think when the clock got bungled up, the clock kept running and just burned them up, burned them right off there. And you see that little, there's an extension there that's longer than the original, and I'll have to cut that off to make it fit and it does it fits it fits just fine 
so I had to adjust it a couple more times to get it right where I wanted it. And it's a matter of getting the cover here back on. You just line it up and carefully snap it into place. And it'll actually snap. It'll make a, a, a loud snap, so I know it's not going to go anywhere. See, they didn't make these motors to be disassembled at all. They made them to, to, be, to work for a while and then to be thrown out. That's okay. We're going to get this sucker back together. Now, while it was apart, I'm going to go ahead and um, oil up the gears before I put the covering back on the gearbox. I'm checking it out, and the gears are spinning. So let's turn our attention back here to the clock. Now, I went ahead and put in um, LEDs inside of there because I couldn't, it was going to take me too long to try to get the, it's called a, a fuse lamp. So it, So someone can eventually replace that with the fuse lamp if they wanted to, because I didn't alter anything except attach that LED strip. It's a three LED bar. I'm looking through here, all the things that I've done, and I couldn't show you all of those. They took hours, and so I've put the neon glow bulbs where they go. Of course, we've got our LED over there, and we've got, got a pretty good situation going on. So here, here we see the clock and some dim light, and it's going to look great on the bedside table. And it's flipping again. So everything's working just great. So you can see our, our uh, alarm selectors lit up. And everything flips perfectly. All the numbers are back in. And it works. That's the sleep function. So you turn that on, you can turn off for a few minutes and then go to sleep to the radio. Let's go ahead and test the alarm. We'll test the, so there's the radio itself. Now there's the alarm, so I had to replace that bulb too to show that the alarm's set. Now we're gonna get the horrible chirping. And then we'll switch to wake to music to make sure that's working too. And it does. All the functions are working. And the clock looks great. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It did take a long time. There it is. The Digidator, the Panasonic RC6551. So it's worth a little more than $2 now. Well, thanks for taking the time. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.